And welcome back. Did you know that Dan Rather and I actually agree on what makes bad journalism? Well, if you visited my website, you'd know not only that, but you'd know a whole lot more. You need to stop by MikeHuckabee.com for a sane perspective on the news. Also, follow me on Twitter, at GovMikeHuckabee. My tweets come with a money-back guarantee. <laughs> if only our government would do that with our taxes. Boy, wouldn't that be something. <laughs> Well, my next guest has been one of America's favorite broadcasters for half a century. You have seen him expose corruption, interview the top newsmakers of the day all over the world, host his own talk show, report live from Afghanistan, and break the news of Osama bin Laden's killing. I'll bet you even spent an evening watching him crack open Al Capone's vault. <laughs> That's right, he has chronicled his incredible life and career in a brand new memoir. It's absolutely fantastic. It's called The Geraldo Show. Of course I'm talking about Geraldo Rivera. Great to see thank you here, you, my God. friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me take you back because I, I first got acquainted with you when you were hosting Good Night America. I was a college student and you were the first person in the world to show the Zapruder film. Were you nervous that in showing that it was gonna be so controversial? First of all, let me just say that you've upgraded your studio <laughs> since your days at Fox <laughs> News, and it's yes, wonderful I have. to have your audience. It was something that was uh, not only groundbreaking in the sense that we aired it first, but also it seemed to show that the young and gracious 35th president of the United States was killed in a conspiracy with a shooter from the front and a shooter from the back. The film seemed to indicate that, uh, you know, the head motion and so forth. And it was because of that, so uh, gut-wrenching in yeah. many ways, awe-inspiring and deeply disturbing. I mean, later upon examination and forensics, I came to believe that the Warren Commission was probably right about, uh, you know, a single assassin. You, you believe there was just one shooter. I, I think that, that it is more likely than not. Put it that yeah. way, Governor. One of the things that I find fascinating about you is in this day of Donald Trump, uh, you were a part of The Apprentice, the television show, but you have known him for many, many years. You've had a long personal relationship with him, but your wife doesn't care much for uh, him. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I have had a 40-year <laughs> friendship with, uh, with the president. Uh, when he was a, a playboy billionaire businessman, when he was a broke businessman uh, on the, you know, uh, on the scene in, in New York City. And then just by chance to be on the final episode of Celebrity Apprentice just two months before he declared for the presidency was extraordinary to be with him every day for six weeks mm. and really see him as a father and a grandfather and see how he had matured, how he had evolved. Uh, and then suddenly he's the long shot candidate for president. Uh, you know what that's like. Uh, thank you for reminding <laughs> me. Yeah. Appreciate that. All right, we're done here. <laughs> but Erica, you know, I, I know Janet, you know Erica. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, she's, the, his policies are anathema to her. I, I disagree with many of the president's policies. The difference is my wife cannot separate her feeling, her negative feeling about his policies from the man. I can. I have always had great affection for you and tremendous respect for you, Governor, because you are someone who's been open minded You have your views. You have your heartfelt principles. Right. But you are worldly enough that you can be friends with someone who doesn't see eye to eye with you on everything. The president, for example. When the president succeeds, America succeeds. We only get one president at a time. You know, Roseanne was absolutely right in the show that she did uh, and is now doing to great acclaim. Uh, you, you know, we get one president at a time, and if, if you're just hating on him, what good is that for anybody? You know, there's so many things about the book that I think people are going to really enjoy. Even if they don't agree with you on issues, they're going to find this book enthralling. And, and I found one of the most... Uh, maybe revealing things was how 9-11 completely changed you and how that was a big factor in you leaving NBC to go to Fox. I had left my daytime show because NBC made me such a sweet offer. I was getting paid $5 million to have wow. the number one rated show on Rivera Live uh, on CNBC. But when the attacks happened, Governor, it was so devastating to a native New Yorker 
So many friends and, and uh, uh, neighbors were killed. Six dads in my daughter's grade school were, uh, were killed that day. People they, you knew. They, they worked for Cantor Fitzgerald, yeah. absolutely. Uh, or they had some other business in the towers that day when the planes hit. And it was so gut-wrenching in every way. It was so awful uh, and it was so outrageous that I, I told NBC, I said, listen, I've got to go to war. I'm, I'm an experienced war correspondent. I've been everywhere from uh, Cambodia and Laos and Africa and South America and every, you know, or the Middle East and so forth. Let me go cover the war. And they said, no, you're too valuable here on your desk. I said, I quit. Hmm. So then I went to work at my, my friend Roger Ailes had created Fox News. He said he, can't, he couldn't pay me anywhere near that kind of money. So for 40% of what I was getting paid, I went off to Afghanistan and to walk shoulder to shoulder with our GIs in combat, uh, you know, something, it, I treasure those memories. I walk through the airport, even today in Nashville, coming, mm. coming in. Uh, hey, Geraldo, uh, my son was at forward operating base, so forth wow. and so on, and uh, I have a picture of you, and, and that I treasure that. Well, I want our audience to know, both here in the studio and uh, at home, that I've worked with many wonderful people. You and I don't always agree but we have never had a disagreeable moment. And I have the highest, most wonderful respect for you because you're the most honest, sincere, genuinely decent human being that I think yeah. lives in the business. And that's why you've lasted longer than most people do. People will love your book and I hope they will get it. The Geraldo Show, thank you thank for you, coming Kevin. and being thank here you. with us. And it congratulations with Sarah doing such a great job. Oh, thank job you very much. Thank you. You should be a proud dad, I'm sure oh, you are. Oh, I am. <laughs> and, and granddad. Thank and I want to tell our folks the thank Geraldo you, Show, a memoir, thank you. it is available online and at your local bookstore. You can discover more about the adventures and accomplishments of this battle-tested journalist, and boy, is he ever. Go to Geraldo.com. All right, Rick. You can just tell us whatever you want to now that we have concluded our visit with Geraldo. Good luck topping that. Well, Mike, I'll see your interview with Geraldo and I'll raise you a one-of-a-kind unicyclist and comedian, Mike Bliss. And Sarah Darling's on the show, the sweetheart of country music. All coming up on Huckabee.